Hello there, my name is Martin Wilby. I'm a spinal surgeon from the Walton Centre in UK, Liverpool. Um, I'm delighted to be able to present uh, the results of NERVES, which is our multi-centre trial done in collaboration with the University of Liverpool and Bangor University. So leg pain or sciatica is a common condition. Four in 10 people suffer from it in their lifetime. Five in 100 patients develop it every year. And any one time, 10 in 100 people uh, suffer from it. In most cases, it's due to degeneration within the disc, producing a slip disc or a herniated lum lumbar disc. And this produces physical or chemical irritation of the nerve within the spinal canal. So this can be a, a severely disabling condition, sometimes affecting patients well over a year uh, with symptoms. And also it is a very significant um, uh, cause for work time lost, uh, sometimes producing up to 15 calendar days lost from work per month. This all, um, there are two treatments recommended by the UK currently. Um, either we could consider a um, nerve root injection of steroid and local anaesthetic, or we can consider surgical excision of the disc by spinal surgeons. This all leads to expense uh, by healthcare providers and understandably surgical excision uh, generates more expense than an injection. Until now, no study has specifically compared the results of nerve root injections to surgery. And so we set out to uh, study this and we randomized uh, all patients with non-emergency sciatica caused by a prolapsed lumbar disc um, without threatened foot drop or quadriquina syndrome into either treatment with injection or spinal surgery. And this was done at 11 UK spinal centers and roughly 80 patients were randomized into each arm. We selected the Oswald Street Disability Score as the primary outcome. This is a patient reported uh, uh, questionnaire of, of disability and this was uh, uh, selected at 18 weeks. We also looked at other disability scores such as numerical pain scores for leg and back pain and also uh, modified role and Morris scores for sciatica, the uh, core outcome measures index and um, healthy, health equality uh, studies and um, complications and adverse events. So here we can see the graphical representation of the Oswald Street Disability Scores in both groups at 18 weeks. And as you can see, the levels of clinical improvement were roughly the same in both groups, with almost complete overlap of the two curves. We found no significant difference between the treatments. Surgery, when modelled against injection, gave a 4 point out of 100 improvement in the Oswald Street Disability Score, which wasn't clinically or statistically significant. Now, patients did cross over from their allocated treatments 35% of patients um, who were randomised to injection also had surgery and 5% of patients randomised to surgery also had an injection. Now we didn't find any significant difference in any of our secondary analyses for back or leg pain or other disability scores up to one year from follow-up uh, from randomization. When looking at complications there was a clear difference in outcomes. Four patients in the surgery group required further hospitalisation uh, or prolonged stay due to complications from surgery, one patient developed new weakness of their ankle, whereas no significant adverse events were found in the injection group. Our health economic analysis showed that the cost of gaining one quality adjusted life year by using surgery as the first line treatment over injection was close to £40,000. And this is well above the threshold taken for whether or not this is likely to be cost effective treatment. So, to summarise, nerve root injections to treat sciatica secondary to herniated lumbar disc within a year of onset of symptoms won't work for all patients, and certain extreme cases will always require surgery. But for the majority of patients, we present evidence that injections are a safe and effective first-line treatment for this disabling condition.